Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. We hope you guys are doing well. Indeed, we do. And please do subscribe. Both channels, EE Arts. Yesterday, we were talking about the two CMEs and the solar storms heading our way. And we got an update for you with that. And also Evolutionary Energy Arts, where we were talking about full-scale war possibility by 2024, both civil and domestic, and, well, civil and domestic are the same, basically, mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah, close enough. And on the bigger scale as well, as well as Canada announcing that they're full-scale partners. No surprise there, Trudeau, with the WEF. So let's start over at the Watchers. <clears throat> we have a strong... G3 level uh, storm watch ongoing right now with these series of CMEs produced on the 14th and the 15th. And so, you know, everybody reacts differently. All of a sudden, I mean, I was pretty high all day. I mean, not, you know what I mean, energetically why? Why is that? And, you know, now I'm just crashing. Honestly, I'm just crashing now. And now it could be because, you know, there was physical work and energy work involved and we've been doing a lot of fasting as well which gives you a lot of purging which can also tire you out when your body is getting rid of all sorts of toxins but it also could be because we are definitely getting hit with a lot of energy now coming from the sun mm -hmm. it's really interesting they do have a lot of scientific words for it but what's going on is we are processing light in a completely different way. So the way it spits out from our source sun and hits our bodies is giving us so many different new light codes, upgrades, ways of being. It's, it's really exciting. Yeah, and you can see here the KP index is at 6. Now my normal link comes to this, page not found. And that, that's weird. Sorry that page is missing. So... It makes me feel like there's some sort of maybe cover-up going on with just how big this is. Um, so we do see anyway that the KP index is at 6. Will it reach higher you know, in these times too? I mean, we're getting more sensitive every single day. That's a really big one, the sensitivity that we're going through. So be really good to yourself. Give yourself a break. Give yourself rest and just be gentle on your soul and understand others are going through a lot too. Oh, and we and we just cannot escape from the insect as food mentality. And Ukraine is is basically well, you'll see there's there's actually like bakeries out there already for baked goods using insects. And Ukraine's expecting poor quality wheat. Now Ukraine's the breadbasket of Europe. It's forecast to have lower quality wheat in recently commenced 2022-23 marketing year due mainly to the impact of cold weather earlier in the season. Ukrainian farmers have harvested 82% of the planned area of wheat and the quality is rated more than 50% is rated as feed quality. Lower protein content. And this is also actually the situation in Russia. We were talking about Russia having a, a record year as far as the amount of wheat, but they say that the quality is lower, mm -hmm. which again, the quality of our food being you know, lower every year seems to be almost a given. It is, you know, and it's one of those things where they layer on another alchemy to make us a little bit sicker. Now, the other part of this article, which I wanted to bring up because we've been touching on it lately, is that chitin or chitin in insects. And there is con contradictory info out there. I did a search on it and I was coming up with some NIH articles, some official articles that were saying that it, it actually could be used to fight cancer. And then we also see some articles out there that say that it could cause cancer. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, what's the deal? I, I personally do not trust anything coming from any of these quote-unquote of official sources. Actually, I, I think I'd have more trust going in along the lines with somebody that is not part of any official source. 
I would too, most definitely. So while on the topic of what the hell are people going to eat in the coming months and years, I've been made aware that insects, the new food source, that are are betters, he says. The elites, the cabal, these secret societies that the WEF, et cetera, et cetera. They're all demanding that we switch in the name of saving the planet to eating insects. So they contain a chemical called chitin, which, according to some sources, is a compound capable of causing serious damage to humans, cancers, etc. In insects, it functions as a scaffold-like material, supporting the cuticles of the epidermis and the trachea, as well as the peritrophic matrices lining the gut uh, epilithium. It is important to the insects, of course, hence its existence. By some accounts, though, the chemical compounds bad news for any human curious enough to ingest it. It's the building block for fungus and cancer, and it cannot be cooked out. Unsurprisingly, the official party line states that it's perfectly safe and effective. This is what the EPA has to say. Given its lack of toxicity, it's not expected to harm people, pets, wildlife, or the environment. Not expected. Also in support... The use of edible insects has a long history in China where they've been consumed for more than 2,000 years. So for this person, the jury is still out in your thoughts. Again, you know, I I just think it's overly suspicious as we see the first cricket farm in the Russian Federation in the Novosibirsk region. They're going to be making flour from insects and bake bread with it, make pasta bars and fitness cookies. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll, I'll pass, guys. I'll pass. And something tells me, and it, it already is in some foods, you got to read your labels carefully, or you just might find that you're eating stuff that might make you go run to the bathroom and relieve yourself very quickly. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. Read your labels. Things are changing really, really fast. So definitely. Paris had 80% of their average rainfall in 90 minutes 90 minutes obviously this is not a good situation and yeah i was looking at our 10 day and it looks like we have a chance at rain almost every single day so more than likely we'll go from heading towards a a drought in eastern uh, texas to having floods and so you know again in this world you just got to be prepared for whatever they're gonna throw at us indeed Over here, we see a large geyser erupts in Hokkaido. That's the northernmost island in Japan, sending jets of water up to 130 feet. All sorts of real, actual uh, earth changes going on, as well as the augmented. And we were having a conversation today with a family member that we were doing a Vedic uh, astrology chart for. And originally from Texas, uh, currently in California perhaps returning to Texas soon. We were just talking about how Texas is so diverse and how powerful the economy is. Did you realize that in 2021, Texas rated as the world's largest, ninth largest, ninth largest economy? That's big. That is big. You know, California, we've, we've talked about that for years, how Cal- California could stand alone as a country in, in many ways. And... <clears throat> Texas has been growing so fast, but so many leaps and bounds, has an economic diversity, and it really is a very, very diverse state. It, it doesn't even seem like the sta- same state where we are, and then you go to El Paso, and not alike at all. World's a difference. So if it was a nation, it would be the world's largest, ninth largest economy. And again, the diversity. And there's a lot of reasons why people are going to Texas, also geopolitical, and also Florida, by the way. Both states, huge booms. And then we have Governor Newsom. Hey, everybody. It's Governor Gavin Newsom. And and we're back here together in search of the truth. (laughs) And the truth is, you're being misled. Dare I say, being lied to. Well, certainly you mean it's by you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, let's not call the pot... Was a kettle black. Don't call a kettle black. Yeah. 
Uh, pot calling the kettle black. Yes, no. thank you. Well, you know, hey, his buddy to the north, who he made some deals with in Canada, California and Canada deals, and I thought that's curious. Mm-hmm. California and Canada, they're not even sharing a border, and they're making deals to work together. But then, of course, he's a member of the few, and so is Trudeau. So he says we're being lied to. You know, red state governors are lying to you. State governors, they, they talk a big game, don't they, about providing parents with education choice. <laughs> but when it comes time to, well, walk the walk, they're absent. Let, let's take a look at how one state, in particular, just as an example, Alabama chose to invest versus what we did here in the state of California. Both California and Alabama received substantial amount of new money from the federal government. Alabama spent hundreds of millions of dollars of that federal money, 400 million to be exact, on two super-sized prisons. No investment in kids, no investment in real choice. California, on the other hand, has spent our federal money, invested it by giving three and a half million kids college savings accounts, giving them real choice about their academic future, giving them up to $1,500 in these accounts. Alabama chose to invest in prisons and punishment. California chose to invest in education and the future. That's the California way. America, it's time to make your choice. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's pretty obvious that, that he is going to be their poster boy on on the left-hand side when it comes to 2024. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he made that surprise visit to the White House. And, of course, you know, 46 l- looks like, you know, something from... Night of the Living Dead, or you know, The Walking Dead. Really, I mean, he—he's just—he does—he's just not looking like he's barely there. And you know, which which person too? You know, which clone? Which body double? So yeah, you know, attacking the red. The, just look at what we are seeing. It is such a divide, and you know, again, California is losing so many people. And you see, this is Governor Ivy over in Alabama. And yet, Governor, folks are making their choice, leaving California in droves and calling red states like Alabama home. Down here, we're focused on public safety. And if we're talking, you know, COVID relief, we invested billions in our students. Common sense, that's the Alabama way. You know, again, Newsom's one of the few. He is totally on board with that agenda. And again, this is also so obviously the breakup of the states that we're watching so which one's a real joe left or right i thank you gwen for hosting this and governor it's a pleasure to meet you and it's a pleasure to be with you first of all um thank you for doing this and looking thank forward you. to this mr president thank you, i uh the american people have a right to have a say in who the supreme court nominee is if you need any more proof positive of how bad the uh, economic theories have been, this excess of deregulation, the failure to oversee what was going on, letting Wall Street run wild, I don't think you needed any more evidence than what you've seen now. So I don't think you needed any more evidence than what you've seen now. I don't think you needed any more evidence than what you've seen now. I don't think you needed any more evidence than what you've seen now. Yeah, we were looking at his hand in the last one. You know, it's just when when everything gets peeled back and the great awakening is happening, the apocalypse is fully exposed for what it is. Whew, I think a lot of people are going to be shocked. Mm-hmm. You know, they really are. But I want to just step back just for a second when we're speaking about California and children and having an education. And someone did ask in the comments about, you know, unschooling. Do you know anyone who who is doing that? I think they were around Texas, looking around the Texas area? The answer is no, that I don't. I don't know where to find this, but I know it's a thing. And I I have a feeling that it's going to be picking up steam because what we're doing is we're looking at our children, we're finding their strengths, and we're building upon that instead of giving a curriculum that's simply going to be teaching them how to run things for uh, for those controllers. So we want to build on our children's strengths that they already have. And I'm so excited to see parents do this. And it really seems to be catching on. So I hope, I hope it really goes somewhere. Yeah, again, 
so much of education is indoctrination into a particular belief set, and and we see that coming to its fruition now. Jupiter's ice moon Europa probably has upside down underwater snow. Isn't that curious? Now e Europa is very interesting. Um, again, going back to 2001, a space odyssey, and 2010, and in in the end, it's um, Europa that we're told as Jupiter ignites. And this is in the, and the book was different than the movie, but in the movie, it's Jupiter that unites. And humanity is given all these new worlds to go and explore by some sort of extraterrestrial in intelligence. But they're told to not go on Europa. That one's off, off limits. And Europa is... Yeah, you know, just fascinating, really. It, it's all covered in ice, and it might hold, even though, well, let me just read you this. For astrobiologists, Europa is one of the m most intriguing objects in, this, in the solar system. The moon is covered by an ocean 40 to 100 miles deep, capped off by an ice crust 10 to 15 miles thick, according to NASA. Europa is a quarter of the size of the, U of, of the Earth, I should say, not the U.S., but its surface-wide ocean may hold about twice the water as all of the Earth's oceans, according to the Space Agency, making it an intriguing place to search for extraterrestrial life because there very well could be underneath the ice sheets. So <clears throat> what do you get when you do a remote viewing of Europa? What, what do you see on Europa? You know, actually, I get a whole lot of excitement in the solar plexus, and I'm looking at this, and what I'm seeing is a, a body of information that is used to study, not just from our standpoint, but it's used to study at many other, many other different planets, many different places actually use Europa to try to understand what's going on there, so it is like a giant study it's really interesting and the scientists that look at it look in it observe it they're just they're really full of awe you know so we're not getting hardly any information about the truth of this because it's studied from all different areas all different places other planets look at it so it's really quite amazing it's going to become a really big deal i think in the next 10 years people are going to start to understand more and more and more when it comes to the so-called science that they talk about today we're going to be learning quite a bit from this place and it might not be from this planet either we might start learning from other planets Okay, explain that more. <laughs> <laughs> there, Well, there's a lot of other planets that we can't necessarily see, we haven't been told about. As we know, we're in a place that a lot of things are very, very hidden. And since this is EE Arts, it's okay. When we look at our sky, we see the blue sky, we see the clouds, and so many people look up and they see the clouds, but they might feel something. You know, they just feel this energy. It's like, that's not a normal cloud. And it's not. There's a lot of entities use the clouds to sit there and basically watch us. There will be a time, I believe, within the next 10 years when we're going to understand that that sky is a huge hologram and there is a lot of planets out there. And, <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, let that soak in. So, you know, this is something that you had given, a, given me a while ago. And w I think we've kind of hinted or made reference to that. Um, just like with the moon. And I've shared with you guys before that when I was living in, in North Carolina, it was, I think, November. It was cold and brisk. might have been the end of October. Um, but I was staring at a full moon with somebody else. And while I'm looking at the moon, it went blank. And my face must have showed an expression. They looked at the moon. We both looked at each other with, like, our mouths open because the moon went blank. All the craters just disappeared. It was just, like blank white uh, screen over the moon, so, so to speak. And I, I do um, think that that was, you know, a, a something that I don't know if it was for everybody to see or you know, I, I'm not really sure w w why I saw it. But again, if, if the other person was not there, I would think it was something that my guides were trying to get across. 
Um, yet the moon itself, this is something else we've gotten, uh, is actually a fourth density thing. So when we see the moon up there, we're not really seeing what we see. Mm -hmm. It's actually fourth density. Now, it, it does have a gravitational effect on the Earth. Um, but again, it, there is a holographic projection that's on it. So did is it real when we see, you know, all those Apollo landings and stuff? N no, they're not real. <laughs> right, right. I think there's a lot of information that's um, presented to us that's not exactly true. But then again, a lot of this information also, it's not ready for our consciousness right now. Not yet. No. And again, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater because it, it doesn't mean that there's no other. Because you'll have people say that, well, there is no space. Well, space is not an empty vacuum like they say but yeah there's other stars out there there's other planets out there there's other civilizations out there uh, they abound there's an infinite number uh, of of different habitable planets circling stars and with tons of different uh types of beings on there of all sorts so so that is 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 something that is real yeah, at the same time, yeah, you're right. When we see strange things, like we've seen um, situations where astronauts were being filmed, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, they're out there in gravity, things are floating a certain way, and then all of a sudden it stops, or something behaves in a way that shouldn't. All of a sudden it's like, you know, you're seeing this picture from the ISS, and then it looks like there's somebody kind of moving in the background and maybe there is mm -hmm. you know again they they distort everything they twist everything um you know again we've talked so many times about darwinian evolution N yeah charles darwin was giving us their version of evolution survival of the fittest that's how they look at things but that's not really how the universe works but it doesn't mean that there's no evolution mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean there hasn't been creation either there is creation you know, they don't, the universes don't just come into being. They're, they're thought and planned into being first. And then, then they're actually, you know, the, the creation part happens. Uh, so there's all of the above, but everything that we get on planet Earth is distorted, twisted, and really a fabricated lie. It, it really is. And we're fed information to constantly be in this space where we believe that there is a beginning and we believe that there is an end because that's just the nature of, of information on this planet. But ultimately, cosmos cosmic consciousness the consciousness that we are that we are dealing with that we are looking at that we are living with it's it's inconceivable to many people that there is no there is no beginning and there is no end we just simply are so i mean there's a lot of information that people aren't quite ready for but they're going to be i really feel there's going to be a lot come out in the next 10 years um having to do with europa so we'll see Absolutely. And, and I thought this was interesting because I asked Cindy's take on it and she did think that, that this was uh, fairly legitimate. You, you got the impression this, this was real. This is somebody being stalked and then they're attacked. And, you know, I don't have permission to play it, so I'm not going to actually play it, but we can kind of fast forward here and you can see the guy is attacked, pulled down, and then something happens. Wait a minute. See? It's like there's a projection. There's something within him that comes out. And when I see this this arm the way it is and the shape that really reminded me of something that we encountered and we got on film. So I'm going to show you guys that too and we've experienced a lot of things and that's part of why, you know, with Cindy and I um, probably why we get along so well is, is the fact that we've had experiences our entire life. So it's like there's this being inside. Can you see there's two beings there? Clearly, there's the guy and there's something that comes up and out of the guy. Mm -hmm. And basically saves the guy from uh, pummeling. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, right. And, you know, I don't want to scare anybody, but this is actually quite common for these entities to come up and out. It's just this in this situation. I'm not too shocked that it is on film because film is made in such a way where it can see things that are human eyes can't. So I've seen these things come up and out of many different like floors come up and out of tables, but it's that action where they are coming up and out of something. So this entity has quite a lot of power and he takes care of his human because I also believe that these entities sometimes are charged with um, protecting humans for different reasons. There's all sorts of en entities. So I, I've shared with you guys in Taoist philosophy, we are composite beings. And what we've gotten from the guides is in reality, that's, that is true. We're, we're composite beings. What does that mean? Y you are more than one being. There's more than one consciousness having an experience as a typical human. Okay, so that sounds really strange for probably most people. And it is most definitely mind-bending. But in the Taoist philosophy and in Qigong, we are taught that there is the Yuan Shen, and that's the part of the person that comes from the higher self. We could kind of think of it as the soul, so to speak, which is joined by what's called three Hun spirit, spirits, H-U-N. Uh, and the Hun, you could think of as three guardian angels, spirit guides, so to speak. Where do they, they actually reside in the liver, which is interesting. Now, the Hun are going to guide us along our highest and best path. They're going to kind of always be giving us that advice, like the angel on, on the right shoulder. Whereas, you know, you might have the equivalent devil on the left shoulder telling you to do something that's dangerous or something that's, you know, not of the best for you or whoever else is involved in that act. Then there's the the Po spirits, P-O, Po. And there's seven of those. Those actually come from the earth. And so those are more of a carnal nature. They can also be representative of the seven deadly sins. You know, greed, avarice, lust, all these things. And so, you know, these beings are with us all the time. When we drink in excess of alcohol, those three Hun spirits get kicked out of the liver, and then we're just basically listening to the seven Po. So it's like the, the guardian angel on the right shoulder, while the alcohol lowers the vibration. We can't hear them anymore. They're actually literally driven outside of the body until the alcohol levels come down lower. And all we are getting is the seven post spirits saying, go ahead, have one more drink. Go ahead. You know, see if the car could hit 100. You know, hey, that guy said something to you. You should hit him. You know, this is the type of stuff that comes uh, from those energies. Yet, there's, there's so much more to this than just that. There is so much more to this than just that. Just like when we're talking about higher self, we have a higher self we might actually have multiple higher selves. And, you know, again, that's going to take uh, a lot more videos to get in, to get into detail and, and to get people used to some of these concepts, which can be hard to understand. Now, you know, again, this, this was pretty darn interesting because, I mean, shoot, it looks like it's a scene from a movie. But yet, what we wanted to get across was, was just that, that not everything is what it see, seems. When we talk about guardian spirits, when you look to all the gargoyles of mythology on, on the uh, you know, walls of castles and stuff, they're thought to be protective, right? Well, you know, there's actual magical practices where you can... Cre create using the life force, the chi, the ki, the prana that's all around us all the time, an energetic being, and then put that being into a statue like the gargoyle in order to give people the feeling as they walk by and they think, well, maybe we should break into that castle. Give it, no, it, its purpose would be to give people the feeling that no, you should not break into that castle. 
Yes, you should leave all that stuff alone. No, you shouldn't steal this or that. Again, you know, this is part of magical practice. And and magic really is is just basically manifesting your will through intention. And of course, you know, there's white and black and there's all f all the different shades of gray in the middle. It just depends on what the intention is. If it's, you know, service to self in a negative light where others are harmed, if it's in service to the greater good, and then all those different possibilities between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's so much information there. And unfortunately, we're extremely limited with our vocabulary and with what we've been taught. And even our perception has been limited from a very, a very, very small age. So it does make these concepts and understanding sound like they're really, really far out there. But they're a part of us living and breathing just as natural as you know, natural is water. So we've shown this before. And this happened right after we were buzzed by a uh, flying triangle, like a TR-3B over in the Hattiesburg, Mississippi area. As we were looking for a property and pretty settled in on, on the greater Hattie Hattiesburg area. Um, and then we stayed at this RV park, and we've shared this with you several times, but, you know, this might be new for some of you out there. There was this entity that appeared and literally killed this whole flock. It was sheep and goats, and it, there was at least a dozen, if not 20 of them. And uh, they all ended up uh, ripped apart. And, and so there, there are definitely dark entities you could see this thing looks to be created out of pure fire like a fire elemental and you here you could see clearly a uh, head and shoulders and we've you know analyzed this and done several videos on this um very very creepy but it was also i think i think this thing actually followed us from New Mexico because the guides told us, they warned us, they said it was time to get out of New Mexico. A portal had been opened and uh, the the dark ones, Some in some traditions these are called jinn. Or you could simply call them demons and I won't argue with you. This is something that is demonic. It's it's not a benevolent being, as you can see it holding out its arm, and, and there's something it's holding in its hand there. Uh, this is a nasty thing. And so in uh, Islamic tradition, they're like these fire elementals. And it's also in other traditions, too. In, in magic, you know, there are these uh, fire elementals, which can be used for different purposes. You might use one as as a guardian of sorts or you know they could be used to create havoc and even you know take lives possibly so i just wanted to share that with you guys again because to me when i was looking at this it reminded me of that video um but you know again perhaps a different type not necessarily a fire being but maybe, you know, something else, some other sort of elemental being, some other sort of guardian spirit. Mm -hmm. There's just so much stuff out there that we haven't been taught, we haven't been exposed to. And in the upcoming years, we are going to be seeing many of us are going to have these abilities where we do start seeing more and more things that we just don't understand. So I just wanted to share with you one of my projects. Uh, this is uh, a loft bed that I put together um you know just basically made it up as i kind of went mentally had a vision of it and so uh it's two by six construction uh mostly and what we wanted to do was we love the pups but the pups will always jump on the bed mm -hmm. so you know the bed uh, was old needed to be replaced and so i had and Cindy had, had um, we both had experiences with, with these types of beds in the past. And so um, it's basically five feet tall, it's five feet wide, it's eight feet long. And I put in some, you know, little shelving areas there. It's very strong. Actually, if we had a, 
a hurricane or if we had a tornado come on by, I mean, we could probably hide underneath it because it's it probably weighs about 400 pounds. Um, so I just wanted to share with you guys, as you can see, the pups. So the, the pups get the bottom, basically. As you could see, every time we give the pups bones and things, there's there's always at least three that are given. Uh, though Rama, you know, he, he tends to think everything is his. Yeah. That's just the way he is. So I just wanted to share with you the project. Um, I was tempted to kind of paint it in an antique green, but maybe we'll just leave it wood or just put a sealer on it. And thank you, Mama Jan, for the blanket. Mm -hmm. Mama Jan sent us, one of our beloved family members, this blanket with Celtic knotwork. Um, so, yeah, nice and nice and strong and sturdy. And if I had to estimate, it probably cost me maybe $350 to put the whole thing together. Uh, when I was looking uh, at different stores, I was looking at how strong the things were for 500 bucks, And it, no, there's, there was nothing that was sturdy. This is way stronger um, than probably anything you could buy for less than a couple grand. Uh, as it's it's very very solid construction plus I was able to kind of put little things in there that I wanted to do so there is like a spot two uh, which I don't think I got a good picture of so to speak well yeah so it, like right in here this is about uh, two feet basically and um, I was thinking about putting like a a little box that could open up and you could put blankets in there but then i thought no you know i'm gonna make it into an area where sassy could sleep so we'll put down some pillows and stuff and then sassy could go right there she gets the privilege of coming upstairs and and rama and sita are just too big you know they're just too big they're they take up way too much room mm -hmm. and sassy is the great white pahana so for them it'll be most appropriate that she's she's up there but yeah i mean it feels like we're sleeping in a, a tree house every night <laughs> it's fun it's fun i love tree houses that was probably some of my best times as a child is sleeping in the tree house so now we get to every day it's great Absolutely. So the U.S. is facing a massive shortage of conspiracy theories, as all of them have come true. I love this. It basically is massive shortage of conspiracy theories all across the U.S. I love this. Because honestly, when you think about it, which ones have been proven false? You know, cell phones causing cancer. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's true. You know, it, we could go on and on. Nonstick cookware, yeah, you don't want that stuff scratch, and then people catch up to that. And, you know, it just goes on and on. The, the chemtrail wiki, which is so outdated, you know, one after another, after another, after another, all being proven true. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, too. And, you know, with the bed, too, it's like in my mind, you know, this, this house, uh, we were exhausted being on the road so much and stuff. So, you know, we, we kind of grabbed what we could. It literally is one third of a monthly payment of any rental we would be able to find anywhere. So, you know, it's so cost effective to basically have such a tiny mortgage. And, um, I would love to build something more like a log cabin or something. It doesn't have to be big, you know, six, 700 square feet is fine. Um, it just, I love that exposed wood thing. I just love the, the feel of, of a rustic environment. And so, you know, we are still, you know, uh, we have eyes open as I, I would encourage everybody to have eyes open. Um, for good possibilities out there because I am watching the real estate markets and there's more and more coming on. Prices are dropping. Uh, people are leaving certain states in droves, in droves. And that's going to only increase. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have that crash come. And then you're talking pennies on the dollar. And as, you know, conversation we had with David Debine before, he was saying, you know, you might be able to get yourself a nice little homestead w for some pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. You know, just you go biblical, like 20 pieces of silver might buy you a beautiful homestead. Because, you know, again, the way the inflation is, 
<laughs> the currencies aren't going to be worth crap. You know, and if, if you're thinking about it, we can still manifest. Everybody's manifesting at like speed of light right now. So dream big. Absolutely. Thank you guys for your support on Patreon and also on Ko-Fi because that's what keeps this going and doing these th these type of things. And we'll share a lot more with you guys moving forward. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.